I would like to scan all of you in this room, one at a time. I must remind you that the scanning experience is usually a painful one, sometimes resulting in nosebleeds, earaches, stomach cramps, nausea, sometimes other symptoms of a similar nature. There's a doctor present, Dr. Gatimo. I know that you've all been prepared for this, but I thought I'd just remind you just the One of the best things about dubstep and the reason it kind of needed to happen was that virtually every other music out there that you could go out to had just become formulated. Do you know what I mean? You had your house doing exactly the same thing for 10 years. Drop the bass and started to do it, it just got formulated. And one of the best things for me about dubstep is that there is no formula. It's hard to describe what the sound is, but it is definitely an amalgamation of loads of different genres and different styles, um, which is part of London, really. You know, London is so diverse. Dubstep is the perfect name for it because it has got that dubby, that dubby side. You know, it doesn't mean oh, it's just it's just reggae influenced or something like that. It's like techno DJs are playing it. It crosses over as well, so it's one of them sort of things. It evolved out of UK garage, which um, Two Step Garage had a lot of R&B uh, and house influences in it. Um, and dubstep was a strain of that that came out of UK garage that was. Uh, darker, had more jungle influences, uh, reggae influences and dub references. Dubstep is really an acquired taste, you know? There's some people that get it instantly. Like when I heard it live for the first time, I was like, wow, that's it. But for other people, it, it, it's, it takes time to get used to it. It relies more on a bass groove to give you the pace rather than a beat pattern. It's half time, so it's got that sort of almost like how Grimes got that hip hop effect. This almost reminds me of early hip hop. In an ideal world, then anything goes. Um, the, 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 the thing that's consistent in the music is the sub bass. You know, it's. Um, it's not too much mid-range bass frequencies that you get in drum and bass just now. So it's got a solid sub-bass foundation and as I said, in an ideal world, anything goes on top of that. plan to write this type of music because we thought there was a space. It just so happened a couple of things that we were writing, um, Hatcher must have heard, okay. and he was like, you know what, I can play this, you know? And I was like, okay, and it was night called Forward, um, and that's where our stuff started getting played, and all of a sudden, you know, a little while later, people were saying, right, this is dubstep, so we are like, okay, we write dubstep. That's it. Hatcher started playing this sort of underground garage, and then uh, me and Benga, who uh, I used to make tracks with, we just sort of got together and started making this new sound. It was like, there weren't really nothing, because we couldn't do the underground garage things. It had been done by, they'd been doing it for years, like the people who were big at the time, and we sort of come through and tried to do something new, like different sort of minimal beats, beats and bass really, to sort of get the point across. This one's by Scream. This is the request line track. Absolute killer. This is blatantly the biggest tune in the scene and in the whole shop, for that matter. Well, yeah, I done the quest line about, I think it was, not last box, yeah, the boxing day before the last. Sort of just had it, I was sitting on it, like playing it to people and, you know, how it goes, it waits, it takes a little one. Not, not many people feeling it at first. And then youngsters started playing it and a couple of the sort of grime heads were getting on it. And yeah, it all sort of picked up from there. Big records like that are really useful, they attract a wider audience just beyond the niche that you already have. It's quite a big, big success in both scenes, really. Like, most like the dubstep scene, which I'm more in, and the grime scene as well. Yeah, this one is the Digital Mystics track. This is the Anti War dub. Uh, big, big tune. It's tearing up the scene at the moment. Slightly different to the scream, but again, it's just uh, an anthem. It 
it's a sound you can't really describe until you until you hear it and it's not like you hear it in an ipod you hear it on a cd player and you say okay well yeah this sounds cool it, it's it, it, there's a there's a there's a physicality to the music you know it's a physical listening experience when you're when you hear it on a big system you hear it loud you, you feel the bass move through your chest you hear your ears get a little warm two places that are, are pioneering in in, in the, the sand um, the first one is Forward that's been going from the start of dubstep has ever existed. That's uh, Plastic People, that's in Shoreditch. And there's also a new night called um, DMZ, which is uh, very successful as well, which is more of a, a bigger sort of rave type thing, and that's at Third Base in Brixton. Third Base is, is a dark room, and it's, it's kind of like doing a rave 20,000 leagues under the sea. The, the, you know, the bass, the sub bass in that on the system in there makes the air heavy. There's a kind of blue light. Um, it's like having a radio but on the seabed. There was nothing going on, so yeah. at the end of the day you just do it yourself. No one ain't going to do nothing for you. That's and that's kind of what DMZ is about. There's too many venues which nowadays rely on their decor. Yeah, yeah. And they have a nice plush looking place and then they have a rubbish sound system and it's just backwards. Yeah, proper. For us, we just wanted a room with some big speakers and that's that. For me personally, it was like I'd missed out on like being part of a breaking scene. And as a photographer, that was always a bit kind of something I'd always like, oh, you know, I was never there. I was too, too young when Jungle broke. I don't really sort of get people together and ask for cheesy smiles. I tend to just document what's, what's going on. Um, someone like DMZ, it's great because people really are in their own little zones. It's quite easy to capture, you know, what's going on. What we've managed to to grab hold of, sort of the fringe elements of virtually every scene out there. <laughs> it's a new sound, and people haven't really heard nothing like it before. And it's not a lot of music's like repeat like the same, but it's just a new thing. You haven't, it's not really been nothing like it before. And it's just, I think that's what everyone likes about it. It's emotional music, it's physical music, it, it's it's amazing that more people aren't going crazy over this, but it's gonna happen, man, I feel it.